process of choosing your retired greyhound is over and you've hopefully selected with the retired greyhound trust's help a dog who's going to fit really well your lifestyle home and family which may of course include other pets this is an exciting time but now that your greyhound is actually about to take up his place as a new family member it's important to help him get into routines and behaviours that make life as trouble-free, enjoyable and fulfilling as possible for all of you, including your dog. And that's what this DVD is all about. There will always be differences of opinion, but the information in this DVD is based on the views of a large number of people with many years' experience of looking after greyhounds. Also, you'll see a number of products in the DVD. The specific ones we show are for illustrative purposes only, and there are many alternative brands and suppliers. And whenever we use the term RGT in the DVD, we are of course referring to the Retired Greyhound Trust. Working closely with vets, all branches of the RGT will ensure that, other than in exceptional circumstances, all the basic requirements of bringing a new dog into your home will have been carried out. The majority of greyhounds adopted from the RGT will have been neutered, have current vaccinations and be up to date with flea prevention and worming. And they will have had a full dental checkup and their teeth thoroughly cleaned. The representatives of the RGT branch from which you have adopted your dog will be able to clarify all this for you. But now it's all about the new boy or girl settling in. As well as the documents in the adoption package you'll have been given by the RGT will be a fishtail collar and lead and a lightweight box muzzle. These are key pieces of equipment. The leather collar supports the greyhound's neck and must be fitted right up behind the ears, just tight enough to get two fingers between the neck and the collar. This is the only part of the neck smaller than the head, and putting the collar there will stop your new dog backing out of his collar and running off if he gets nervous or anxious, or is just plain curious or mischievous. The RGT strongly recommends that you do not use an extending lead. Bringing to a sudden halt an animal which can accelerate up to 40 miles per hour in just a few seconds from a standing start could hurt you and cause serious injury to your dog. The house collar must be worn at all times and have an ID tag attached. This is a legal requirement. The house collar is a soft collar worn lower down the neck than the fishtail collar but not loose enough to fall off. The tag should give the necessary details to ensure that your dog is returned to you if he goes astray. Another way of identifying your dog will be the tattoo in one or both ears. This will have been the dog's unique number from his racing days and it will be shown on your adoption papers. But you may also decide to get your dog microchipped, in which case the chip ID should also be attached to the house collar. The box muzzle should have soft padding across the nose part to avoid rubbing causing any injury to your dog. It should be worn for the first few outings with your greyhound until you know how well he or she behaves socially in new situations. The muzzle can be useful on many other occasions too, for example when introducing a new pet to your dog, to stop him removing bandages or dressings, when travelling in a car, as a safety precaution in the case of sudden braking, or when you leave him at home for the first time if you're worried about any damage, although it's rare for adult greyhounds to chew furniture or furnishings. And don't worry, your greyhound can still drink with the muzzle on if you need to use it for longer periods. And just to be on the safe side, it's also a good idea to muzzle two dogs who are new companions for the first couple of nights or when they're first left alone together until they are used to each other and you know how they're going to behave. You'll be shown how to fit your collar and muzzle before taking your dog home. You may wish at some point to buy a waterproof coat. Well, your RGT branch can supply it and ensure that you have the right fit. The most popular style has a fleece lining. Raincoats, high visibility coats and fleece kennel coats for greyhounds are also available. Your greyhound will of course require some bedding. A single duvet folded in half is fine, or you can use what's called a vet bed. 
But basically, you just need something washable and big enough to allow your dog to stretch out. Some greyhounds like a cushion or soft toy to rest their heads on, and some greyhounds are known to use an owner's shoes for the same purpose. Expect them to be a little soggy when you get them back. Also have two bowls ready, one for food, one for water. You need fairly large ones, at least 10 inches in diameter. Many greyhounds, particularly older ones, prefer to have their bowls in a food stand, which means that they don't have to bend too low to eat or drink. For grooming, you will need a good quality flea comb and a grooming brush or mitt. Also nail clippers if you're going to do your dog's nails yourself, which is a fairly straightforward job with most retired racers as they are so used to being handled. Buy a large size clipper, and most people prefer the secateur type to the guillotine style. A toothbrush is essential. You can buy one from a pet shop or your vet, or use one for humans but with a soft head, and there are many types available. You can buy brushes which have both a large and small head, as well as double-headed toothbrushes that clean both surfaces of the teeth at the same time. And pet shops also sell rubber finger brushes. And some greyhounds even have their own electric toothbrush. But as far as toothpaste is concerned, you absolutely must only use paste made especially for dogs. The foaming agents in human toothpaste are poisonous for dogs. The best type to use is an enzymatic toothpaste available from your vet. This changes the enzyme balance in the saliva and slows down the rate of tartar buildup. Please also provide a few toys. Most greyhounds love soft toys to cuddle up with or just to toss around, and some will chase footballs or rubber rings that are thrown for them, though, as with all dogs, getting them to bring them back to you is another story. Not essential, but sometimes useful, is a safety gate. For example, if you wish to prevent your greyhound going upstairs or want to confine your new dog to one room for a short period. He will be confined but won't feel excluded and so won't get too anxious. Few dogs will bother to jump over a gate as they can still see what's going on. This is of course just a way of reinforcing an instruction. Greyhounds are generally very good travellers but as with all dogs it's sensible to take precautions when going by car. If you don't have a safety guard in your car that's been fitted by the manufacturer, you can buy a travelling cage to fit your vehicle and dog, or you can introduce your dog to wearing a safety harness. These can be purchased from pet shops, and your greyhound will very quickly become used to wearing one. A dog who is expected to have problems adapting to home life, for example one who is very shy, will probably benefit greatly from the use of an indoor kennel or crate to sleep in and to use as a place of safety. It's often possible to buy these second hand, as some people use them for puppies and then discard them. Going to his new home for the first time can be quite a daunting experience for your dog, so be patient and try to avoid undue fuss. Although they won't have been in a home before and there is so much to get used to, many greyhounds settle in very well and very quickly. So much so that a question often asked is, are you sure this dog hasn't been in a home before? Of course, some greyhounds may take a little longer than others to adapt to the lack of canine company. After all, they're used to being in a kennel with several dogs around them, and the strange noises and lights in a home, particularly from domestic appliances, can disturb them at first. You need to remember that X-Racing Greyhounds are low-tech. They're used to simple lighting and radios that are found in most kennels, not to widescreen televisions and washing machines. But your new dog will adapt if you're patient with him and understand his concerns. Have the water bowl and the bed ready before you go home. When you arrive, ensure that someone is holding the lead before you open the car door, as the dog may panic and try to run off. Keep talking quietly but confidently, reassuring the dog, and go straight into the garden to the designated toilet area and wait till the dog relieves himself, praising him and giving him a treat for doing so. Then, keeping the dog on the lead, go into the house and walk around, showing him everything in a calm and relaxed manner.
If you have glass doors, take the dog towards them, tap the glass and let him touch it with his nose so that he'll avoid running into the doors in the future. Then take the lead off to let him explore on his own. Avoid having lots of people milling around. The neighbours can meet him when he's settled in. This will all work so much better if it's peaceful. Just sit down quietly and let the dog come to you for reassurance as and when he needs it. As a family, you must decide the house rules before your dog joins you. Establishing these rules with your dog is not difficult, but requires patience, perseverance, consistency and firmness. If, for example, your dog does things like pestering when food is being prepared, just firmly pull back on the house collar and say no, and do this on every occasion until the penny drops. Also, everyone in the family must understand that all pets need somewhere and some time for resting without interruption or interference, and all family members must respect that rule at all times. Your new companion needs patience and understanding. Going into a new and strange environment can be a daunting experience for anyone. And for an ex-racing greyhound, it's all to be undertaken without the support and companionship of his kennel friends. Some dogs find that their nerves go straight to their tummies, resulting in rumbling or flatulence or loose stools. Not wanting to eat or drink or pacing around and panting excessively can also occur for the first few days. But don't worry, he will settle down. Keeping an atmosphere of calm and avoiding sudden changes can help him. It's also possibly going to be a shock for your dog to suddenly spend the night alone, as it's very likely that he'll have been used to snuggling up with a kennel partner, or at least to having other dogs around at bedtime. A nightlight is useful reassurance for a new pet, as can be a radio left on low at night or during the day when you're out. Radio 4 is a good suggestion for dogs, as there will be no sudden loud noises or raucous music. Remember, canine hearing is much more sensitive than ours. Also, being confined at night on its own can be quite upsetting for some dogs, as they feel excluded. If you want your dog to stay in the kitchen, for example, try using a safety gate rather than shutting the door on him. You may also find that your dog loses some of his fur in his first few weeks with you. If this happens, there are likely to be a combination of factors causing it, mainly nerves and encountering central heating and carpeting for the first time. The fur will grow back, so don't worry unduly. But do, of course, get your vet to check this out if you are getting concerned. In the majority of cases, your new retired greyhound won't be house-trained, but as an adult dog, he will have a natural desire to be clean and for his home to be too. It doesn't take long for the dog to understand that your house is his kennel and he won't want to soil his own home. You just need to make sure that your greyhound has every opportunity to get used to the changes. When you're starting house training, take your dog out into the garden every hour at a regular point in the hour and praise him, giving him a treat every time he performs. Reduce this frequency to two hours and so on until it is clear that he knows where to go. It's a good idea to always have some small treats ready for this training. You can use small cubes of hard cheese, for example. Having a treat specifically associated with toilet training creates a good incentive for your dog and gets the message across clearly. If you use a word or phrase to identify this specific process, such as wee-wee or get busy, the dog will soon learn it and respond. As your greyhound gets used to the new routines and you get used to the dog, you'll be able to read the signals that he needs to go outside for a toilet break. Some dogs just get restless, others whine, pace up and down, circle or scratch the door. You will also learn if toileting is needed immediately before or after feeding. It's perfectly possible to train your dog to use a particular place in your garden. For example, you can make a small sand pit specifically for this. Getting your dog used to toileting in one area only is particularly useful if you have young children, as naturally you don't want your dog to use the garden where they could be playing.
When your dog first comes home, it may be useful to take the water up in the evening for the first few nights. Dogs who get a bit anxious or feel overheated in their new home may initially drink excessive water, and you don't want them doing that just before they bed down for the night. But this should be the only time that fresh water is not always available for your dog. Don't punish your dog if there does happen to be an accident indoors. He simply won't understand and it will make him anxious. Any accident should be cleaned up with a solution of biological soap powder or liquid. This will remove the smell and prevent the dog wanting to go back to that area. Occasionally, some dogs will try to mark an area or a particular spot, especially if there has been another dog living at the house before. This marking can be outdoors or indoors, for example on a chair leg. This is not the same as having a toileting accident and is natural and basic canine territorial instinct. If it does happen, just quickly take the dog into the garden saying no clearly. Again, cleaning such areas with the biological solution will obliterate old smells, which incidentally only the dog can detect. Always carry nappy sacks or poo bags or a poop scoop for clearing up after your dog when out in public. It is illegal not to do so and can be very offensive, and it's a potential source of illness for young children. Obviously, it's food that provides your pet with the nutrients he needs to keep him healthy. It should also be a pleasurable experience and give structure to the daily routine. Your dog should be allowed to eat calmly, uninterrupted by lots of noise or activity. Feeding also reinforces training and pecking order. For example, if possible, your dog should be fed after the family has eaten, which reinforces his position in the pack, your family being his new pack. Ideally, it's best to carry on with the food that your greyhound has been used to eating at the kennel, and there is a wide range of complete feeds made specifically for retired greyhounds, usually with around 20% of protein content, or in the 18-23% to range to be precise. Your RGT branch, local pet shop or supplier will be able to advise on the best feed to use for your dog. Buy a new feed in small size bags to start with in case it causes a tummy upset or very loose stools. The ideal way to feed often includes a small breakfast in the morning which stops the greyhound getting too hungry as the morning proceeds. This could be either a small quantity out of the dog's daily allowance of complete feed or a small cereal breakfast such as a Weetabix with some milk and water. And some greyhounds love a drop of tea in their breakfast drink too. The main meal can be at lunchtime or in the early evening, whichever suits your lifestyle. Just try to keep to a regular routine. If you find that your dog is getting excessively hungry as it reaches the end of its 24-hour cycle and is really bolting its food, try splitting the daily allowance into two meal times. Whatever works best for feeding your dog is fine, as long as you stick to a regular pattern. Adding water to his feed ensures that your greyhound is taking in sufficient fluids, although fresh water must also always be available. It's preferable to soak the complete food biscuits in cold water, as hot water destroys the vitamin content of the food. You can do this for a while prior to feeding, which softens the meal, though some experts recommend adding cold water to the dry feed literally just before you serve it, as that makes the dog crunch the food, which is good for his teeth. Of course, the amount of food that you give your dog depends on the type of food and the size of your dog, and instructions will be given with the food you buy. Now, additions to the basic food can greatly increase the benefits of the dog's diet. Oil can be added daily, and this benefits the dog in many ways, not least by helping to maintain a healthy, shiny coat and flexible joints. Sunflower, vegetable, olive or fish oil are best, and anything from a teaspoonful to a dessert spoonful is fine. Cod liver oil is better added as a capsule to avoid an overdose. Now you can use oily fish, such as sardines or pilchards, instead as a nourishing addition to the complete feed. Tinned fish in oil or tomato sauce is fine to use, but never fish in brine. Salt is not good for any dog. Oily fish is really excellent for the good condition of the coat and joints, and if you're using fresh fish, use your fingers to check that there are no bones. Unlike many other breeds, greyhounds don't, or at least shouldn't, have much body fat, and the additional fat that they get through the oil in their diet 
is very beneficial. Now you can use tinned dog meat, but this can cause flatulence and has a more limited nutritional value than complete feeds. A bit of grated or crumbled cheese is fine, as an occasional treat on top of the dinner, and some greyhounds enjoy the addition of some cooked vegetables or meat and gravy left over from your dinner. But be sure that what you give them is not salty. Try not to allow your greyhound to become fussy or picky over his food, and it's not a good idea to leave his food down all day for the dog to pick at. If the meal isn't eaten, take it away. Your dog will then learn that he needs to eat it or lose it. Remember that your dog must never ever eat chocolate, raisins, salt, or onions. They are all poisonous to dogs and can cause fatalities. As far as treats are concerned, only use proper dog treats. And it's better to avoid chocolate-flavored treats for dogs, as it only gives them the taste for the real thing, which is very bad for them indeed. And don't let your pet go into bins or steal food at home or scavenge when out, as he may be picking up bad food or even food laced with rat bait or poison. Biscuits, chews, and dry roasted bones can all aid digestion and help keep teeth clean. And small biscuits can be used as treats, but remember that they all add to the total daily food intake, so don't overdo it. And try to make it only adults who give your dog treats. Much though they want to, it's best to avoid young children doing this. Young children are not always clear in their actions, and it's a tall order, for example, to expect a dog to distinguish between a young child holding out a treat for the dog and holding his or her own ice cream. And the ice cream might disappear with amazing speed, upsetting your child. By the same token, if you're bringing a dog into your home, it's important that the family, children in particular, do not eat sitting on the settee or in a low chair, but at the table. This is simply being fair and removing temptation from the dog. Your greyhound should not be allowed to put on too much weight, as this will only be harmful to his health and spoil his enjoyment of life. Ideally, you should be able to see the shadow of the last three ribs, and be able to feel, but not see prominently, the outline of the pin bones. These are located either side of the spine above the back legs, and this is what they should look like in a healthy dog. But if the hair has parted over these bones, or the bones feel prominent, then your dog may be underweight. If they can't be felt clearly, then the opposite is true. It is essential that when introducing any dog into a home where babies and small children are present, special care is taken. Greyhounds are no exception, although as a breed, the majority are fine with children. Never leave your dog alone with a young child. Children must be educated to be calm and gentle with the dog and to have respect for its needs and its bed. A place of safety for the dog is essential, so that he can take himself away if he feels the need to. Greyhounds are people-orientated, gentle, placid and docile, but all breeds have a breaking point when taunted by children. Please teach children respect for your dog and they will soon be the best of friends. Never let a child disturb a greyhound when it is asleep or, as we've said before, allow a child to give the dog treats. Now, if you already have a greyhound and a new baby is due in the home, you can purchase CDs to help accustom your dog to the sounds of a baby so that he's ready for the new arrival. Actually, that might be useful for new parents-to-be too. Retired racing greyhounds will have been used to mixing with other greyhounds and many will have lived with a partner throughout their kennel life, sometimes forming very strong bonds. Greyhounds are, generally speaking, a very sociable, easy-going dog, but some find other breeds a bit of a puzzle, especially when meeting for the first time. Dogs that your greyhound meets may themselves be nervy, and this will more than likely make your dog nervous too. Also, many greyhounds find it easier to get on with breeds that they can meet eye to eye, as it were. Small dogs can be a mystery, and really small ones simply look like something to chase. That's why, when taking your dog out at first, do so on the lead and use a muzzle, until you are confident about his social skills and how he might react to other dogs' behaviour, especially those who bark at him. A dog running freely or on an extending lead may be really alarming to your greyhound if it approaches out of his line of sight, 
You'll know when it's safe to trust your dog off a lead and without a muzzle. And there are, of course, countless examples of greyhounds living very happily with other breeds. It can be really helpful and good fun to take your new dog to your local dog training club. They'll run beginners or socialization classes where you and your dog can learn basic commands, but more importantly, how to get on with other dogs. Some greyhounds that have come from the RGT have even gone on to do the Kennel Club Good Citizen Award classes and passed with flying colours. If you already have a dog and are looking for a new one to join him, you must bring your dog to the RGT kennel to meet his possible new friend. And this is definitely where the dogs will have more say in the choice than you. The following basic rules apply when any dogs, greyhounds or otherwise, who are new to each other meet for the first time. New canine partnerships are best forged by meeting on leads on neutral ground, wearing muzzles and just walking around naturally. You'll know when it's safe to trust the dogs off their leads and without their muzzles. The dogs must be allowed to smell each other. If one wheeze, the other one will usually want to cover the area. This is all normal social behaviour. Repeat this at home, first in the garden and then in the house. Keep the dogs on leads and muzzled until you're confident that they are at ease with each other. You may also want to use muzzles for the first couple of nights or occasions that the dogs are left alone. They seem quite relaxed now. Shall we try them without the muzzles? Some dogs will begin to happily coexist very quickly. Others will take longer. But you'll know when things are settling down. It's vital when a new dog arrives into a home that you have no food, treats or your existing dog's toys around. Any of these might distract the dogs or cause arguments between them. Just provide the beds and then allow the dogs to sort themselves out. Of course, once the dogs are happy together, toys can be reintroduced and you'll probably find that bed sharing and or swapping becomes the norm. As far as feeding is concerned, you need to stand between the dogs at first or feed them separately. Many dogs eat very happily together, but watch out for the little and large syndrome, where one eats faster and more than the other, or subtly intimidates his partner into letting him eat the lion's share. It's surprising how many people don't seem to notice it happening. Greyhounds are sight hounds. They can see up to half a mile away and reach up to 40 miles per hour in a few seconds from a standing start. Their natural genetic predisposition is to chase, as it is with all sight hounds. However, some will have a lesser inclination to chase than others, and some will learn how to select what to chase and what not to. A greyhound who happily lives with his cat may still want to chase the neighbour's cat and squirrels in the park are irresistible to virtually every greyhound, even if they never learn that the squirrels disappear up trees. A greyhound from the RGT will have been cat-tested. However, one who has been classified as cat-friendly must still be tested with your cat or cats. The first meeting must be carefully controlled. Before taking the dog into the house, make sure that the cat is shut away somewhere safe. Then move inside, keeping the dog muzzled, and introduce him to the cat. Make sure that the atmosphere of calm is maintained, and try not to let either animal feel that this is anything special. If the dog lunges towards the cat at any time, pull back sharply on the lead, saying no firmly. If the dog lunges a lot in the first meeting, you can use a water spray to deter him next time. But persistent lunging usually means that there's no point pursuing the exercise. Take care that the cat does not lunge at the dog. Cats can be quite violent if alarmed or frightened, and scratches to the dog's eyes can cause ulcers. If there is a lack of interest or both seem quite relaxed, get the cat out of sight and repeat the meeting later, until they treat the other's presence as the norm and neither gets excited or aggressive. Treats, of course, help to reward both animals for good, sociable behaviour. The same applies to other small animals, such as guinea pigs and rabbits. If they are safely in a cage or run, your greyhound may well ignore them or can be quite quickly trained to ignore them. Some greyhounds live very happily with house rabbits as much as they would live with the family cat. 
But it is, of course, a different story with rabbits running wild. And be prepared to see your greyhound take off. And if it's a retired racer, rather surprised that the rabbit doesn't keep running round and round in circles. Retired racing greyhounds will have been used to daily grooming and a full race groom at least once a week when they were in a racing kennel. That's why the majority respond really well to being handled and will stand patiently for nail cutting, ear cleaning, etc. Grooming your dog is also an important part of the bonding process between the two of you. Start with the flea comb behind the ears and go all the way down the body. Don't forget the front of the neck, shoulders and thighs and around the root of the tail. Combing removes loose hair and finds the occasional flea or tick. A flea caught in the teeth of the comb can be killed by running your thumbnail across the teeth of the comb. Then follow the combing with a softish brush or grooming mitt in long sweeping movements from the head down. Brushing removes more hair and gives the coat a shine. It also helps to stimulate hair regrowth, as does massage. Living in centrally heated houses can cause some drying of the skin and create scurf. A fortnightly or monthly treatment with a product such as coconut oil, which can be massaged in, will help reduce this and give the coat a great shine. Ears need to be cleaned weekly. Use a cotton bud or cotton wool in the areas around the ear flap, but not too far into the ear itself. Cotton wool dipped in olive oil will help clean away any dried matter. If the ears are dirty inside, you can use an ear wash or ear cleaning pads available from the vet's or pet shop. If, unlike this healthy dog's ears, your dog's ears smell, have any discharge or feel hot and seem painful, then take him to the vet's to check for infection. Next, go to the feet. Pick up each in turn and check that nothing is stuck in the pads or between the toes. Also check that there are no cracks, splits or cuts in the pads or excessive dryness and soreness. Sometimes over-enthusiastic road walking by new owners will make the dog's pads sore and dry as many racing greyhounds won't be used to walking on pavements. Aloe vera gel can be a wonderful healing and soothing agent on the pads. It won't mark carpets or soft furnishings, and it's safe if the dog licks it off. Then check the nails. Your greyhound should not be supporting any weight on the nails. You shouldn't hear them tapping on the floors or roads, and you should be able to slide a piece of paper under the nails when the dog is standing on a firm surface. If you look at the nails closely, you will see the line of the quick inside. That's the blood vessel running down towards the tip. It's particularly easy to spot if the nails are white. Cut below that line and the nail won't bleed. Use the nail cutters in one straight clean cut across. Regular cutting, say once a week, will keep the nails at the right length without risking causing bleeding. It's not true that if a dog's nails are left to grow longer, they are easier to cut, as the blood vessel continues to grow with the nail. If a nail does bleed at any time, the bleeding can be stopped with a styptic pen or powder, which are on sale at most pet shops. Racing greyhounds are used to having their teeth brushed, and your greyhound will have had a full scale and polish during its neutering operation. You should brush your dog's teeth at least once a week using a proper canine toothpaste. The best ones to use are enzymatic toothpastes, normally available only from your vet. Choose a soft toothbrush for your dog, any kind will do, but you can use a double-sided toothbrush made for dogs also. Or you can use a rubber finger brush if you'd prefer. Some greyhounds will even allow you to use an electric toothbrush. Not keeping your dog's teeth up to scratch could land you with big veterinary bills in the future and, more importantly, cause your dog pain and suffering. Gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums, and tooth decay can cause bad breath and general ill health and can seriously affect your dog's well-being. As we said earlier, you can also use a variety of dental chews which you can get from a pet shop which help to keep your dog's teeth clean and strong as well as being a treat for him. Your greyhound must be regularly wormed and protected against flea infestation and there is a wide range of treatments available from your vets or from pet shops. Each treatment normally gives your dog protection for two or three months. The product you choose will come with full details about how to use it and how long the protection lasts. 
If there are foxes in your area, it's a good idea to use a flea treatment which also deters mange. Now, it's important to remember that some worming treatments for dogs are poisonous to cats and other animals, so handle and store them responsibly. Ticks are nasty. They attach themselves to the animal with a set of very strong jaws and feed on the blood, and they're often picked up when the dog's walking through long grass. The tick's body is like a small grey sack which fills up with your dog's blood. Ticks must not be pulled off, as the head will remain and can cause a bad infection. Ticks can also carry diseases that are dangerous to humans as well as to dogs. They can be removed with a patent tick remover, just a few pence from your vets, or you can use neat alcohol dabbed on the tick, which will loosen its grip and allow you to pull it off safely. When you adopt your dog, you'll receive his vaccination certificate, which will tell you all the preventative treatments he's had. This will need to be updated by your vet, who will remind you when the next set of treatments are due. If your greyhound gets an upset stomach, has diarrhoea or is sick, it's best to starve him of food for 24 hours. But make sure that he drinks plenty of fluids. You can make up drinks with a spoon of honey to encourage drinking or, if that fails, try a drop of milk in water or some tea. That's a great favourite with greyhounds. The main thing is to prevent a sick dog getting dehydrated. After 24 hours, you can offer a light meal of boiled rice and a little cooked chicken. But if the illness persists after that, or there are other symptoms, you need to take your dog to see a vet. A dog who is listless, hunched up, has dull eyes set back in the sockets, or whose skin doesn't go back immediately if you pinch it up, must see a vet. Any of these could be a sign of dehydration. Foreign bodies in the feet can be a problem. For example, sometimes grass can get into the skin between the toes or a bit of grit or glass into the pads themselves. They can usually be removed with tweezers. Now, if you're convinced something is in the pad but can't see it, you can try a poultice on the foot to draw it out. For example, animalintex. Or go to the vets. Occasionally, dogs will suffer from corns. A home remedy is to keep the corn pared down with a corn knife, and a friendly chiropodist could help with this. Or you can try the homeopathic remedy of thuja. Giving the thuja tablets daily in the food can have a dramatic effect on some dogs, and surgery on corns is expensive, and the corns will usually return. As we've already said, aloe vera gel is a great remedy for soothing and healing sore, cracked pads. The odd bout of lameness from over-exercise or knocking into something is best treated by using an ice pack on the affected area. Flexible ones that you keep in the fridge are great, or a pack of peas will do. But never put these straight onto the skin. They will burn. Wrap them in a soft cloth like a tea towel first. You can also stand an affected leg in a bucket of cold water, or use a hose pipe to cool it down. But you might not find your dog willing to stand still for too long. If you want to use a homeopathic remedy for knocks and bumps, arnica lotion or cream on the affected area is said to help reduce swelling or bruising. Do not use painkillers for your dogs unless by prescription. The odd aspirin may help, but products such as Nurofen can make your dog seriously ill or can even be fatal. Always consult your vet before giving your dog medicines of any sort. The next most useful first aid remedy after ice or cold water is salt water, which can be a very effective antiseptic. Small cuts and wounds should always be washed with salt water. Then you can use a topical remedy such as Savlon cream or spray, or easily available treatments like Sudocrem. Once again, aloe vera gel is also very good for small scratches or sore areas anywhere on your greyhound. Aging occurs gradually in dogs, as it does for us humans. Some greyhounds live to 15 or 16, but probably the average lifespan is around 12. As your dog gets older, you'll notice changes in the coat, possibly some greyness and or change of texture. Sometimes sleep patterns change too. An older dog may sleep very heavily and get alarmed or confused if woken too abruptly. Their eating patterns change too, but a greyhound whose eating or drinking patterns change markedly should be taken to the vet, as these can be indication of illnesses such as diabetes.
Swelling in the abdomen or around the chest area may indicate heart or circulation problems and should also be checked by a vet. A lot of health problems can be regulated to ensure that your greyhound can live a long and happy life. And maintaining good dental hygiene will have a truly positive effect on keeping your greyhound healthy. Obesity can cause many health problems and make life more difficult. You need to adjust the diet as the exercise levels drop off through the ageing process. For example, feeding less calories but more meals, let's say three times a day, can be really beneficial for the older dog. Loss of appetite can usually be dealt with by making the food a bit tastier, with sardines or pilchards, for example, if that's a new treat for the dog. Some muscle wastage occurs naturally with old age and joints become stiffer, as they do with all of us. Many products can help, such as glucosamine, cod liver oil or evening primrose, before moving on, if necessary, to the bigger guns from the vet. Also, ageing can lead to reduced bladder and bowel control, so make sure that your dog has every opportunity to get outside when he needs to. Occasionally, elderly bitches can develop slight urinary incontinence, and that can be controlled very well with appropriate medicine from the vet. Any pets, and greyhounds are no exception, can be terrified of loud noises. Fireworks, storms, thunder and lightning may scare your dog quite a lot. If possible, don't leave him alone. During the fireworks season, take your greyhound out for his walk before dark. Draw the curtains at dusk and put the radio or television on. Your greyhound will look to you for your response to the sounds, so try not to react and stay calm. And let your dog go to where he feels safe and don't keep pampering him, as he'll only react more to the noises around. DAP diffusers are available from your vets, your pet shop or from a number of suppliers on the internet and they're very good for calming your greyhound. This is a plug-in device which emits dog-appeasing pheromones, hence DAP, similar to those produced by a mother soon after a puppy is born. The pheromones create a safe feeling for your dog and can be very effective indeed. Alternatively, seek medication from your vet if the fireworks season causes your dog undue distress. Prior to the fireworks season, you can prepare your greyhound by buying a noise phobia CD or cassette this imitates the sounds of fireworks and should be played at a very low level for a couple of days. Then you gradually increase the volume of the CD over a few days or weeks and your greyhound will become used to the strange noises and hopefully begin to show no fear when hearing the real thing. There are also homeopathic remedies such as Bark Rescue and Serenity. No informational DVD can tell you everything that you need to know, but hopefully we've covered the main topics. The whole point of adopting a retired racing greyhound is to have a new member of the family who will become loyal, entertaining and loving. And just like any other family member, you need to care for your dog. Don't forget that the Retired Greyhound Trust is on hand to answer your queries and your vet can deal with any medical issues. The key point is that it is not hard to keep your dog happy and healthy and he or she will, without doubt, be a great companion. Music